Hello everybody. Later today I have both Aston Martin and Ferrari V12s to drive. 1100 British and Italian horsepower. And yet that's not the car that I'm really excited about. It's this, the Citroen DS. More specifically, a 1965 Citroen DS19 Pala, or Palas, however you want to call it. The DS is a most revolutionary car, and the simple fact is that I will not, in one video, be able to do any sort of justice to what this car represents. It is, in many ways, the symbol of France's pride and its technological ability. This car has many interesting and advanced features. It has power steering. It has a semi-automatic gearbox. It also looks like it stepped right out of 1950s vision of 2020. It has the famous hydro-pneumatic suspension setup, and it is an utter delight. It is smooth, it is wafty, it is wonderfully French. It's also not the easiest thing to get used to. The gearbox is actually not too bad. The gear lever is on top of the steering column here and you kind of move from one gear to the other. Uh, at first and second in particular, I've been told that you sort of just lift off the throttle a little bit and it then sorts itself out. As you can tell, it's not the smoothest of engagements, but the engine seems to pull well enough. The engine is actually one part of this car which is rather old fashioned. This is a 1.9 litre engine putting out I don't know, some power, 60, 70, 80 horsepower perhaps. I did do some research and it's possible this is putting up to about 85 horsepower out, but in reality, yes, simply aren't buying this car for that kind of reason. And that is one reason why these were never particularly popular in the USA. You see, this was a car designed by post-war France for post-war France. The suspension was designed for a road system, which probably wasn't the smoothest even before it had five years of serious warfare carried out on top of it. And if you were someone trying to get back after a period of intense darkness, this thing probably was really something from the gods. And that may be where the name came from, Deus. Ooh, the, the brakes are, are not, not at all easy to modulate. <laughs> The indicators do not self-cancel. That is not a fault. That is how these things are. The steering is incredibly light. And this single spoke here is actually meant to be off kilter. It represents one half of the Citroen Chevron. And this car really is a representation of how advanced and innovative Citroen were. I want to speak to the bloke that did the brake pedals though. <laughs> As with all the crazy things on this car, uh, later ones are famed for having swivel headlights, which are actually quite incredible. Very ingenious system. The inner headlamps were attached to the steering by a series of cables, I think, and they could turn up to 80 degrees to show you where the wheels were pointed rather than the car. Very inventive, very clever. Great party trick, of course, is watching this car rise up from its hunkered down low rider position, which it sits in when it's doing nothing. When the owner told me about this car, he said, yeah, it's got all the really weird stuff on it. It's got the semi-automatic gearbox. You've got a manual available in the ID. A fully automatic gearbox was also about, which I think would have been a three speed. But this being the Pala, the high spec version, got a lot of nice stuff. It was genuinely a leather trimmed car from the off, although this has been completely redone. This car has been a labor of love for its owner and you can really, really see that. He bought it sight unseen on an auction site from France. He had it imported to the UK when he wasn't himself even in the UK and then had to do quite a bit of work to the car. The entire floor was replaced, the entire interior was redone and the exterior has been thoroughly redone too. When he got it, the entire car had been painted red, which is not correct, it's now been returned to this absolutely idyllic two-tone look and it is fabulous. It's a wonderful, glorious thing. Uh, unusually for me, I actually did my drive-by shots with this car before the driving and it took about 10 seconds before somebody commented on what a nice car this was and how it reminded them of their time in 1970s Paris. It has, spent two years on it. What, you have or? No, he has.
19. I absolutely love supercars. I love noisy, crazy race cars. I love the sort of intense experience you get from something like a Ford GT40 or a Cobra, my S2000, anything like that. But more and more and more, I just really do begin to see the appeal of something like this. I often worry when I'm doing drive-bys, I have probably a bit too much of a social conscience for a YouTuber that I'm disturbing people or creating too much noise or racket or anything. And yet this is the kind of car that I feel like we could drive past an old folks home all day long and you get nothing but adoring waves and smiles and people telling you that the vicar and his wife used to have one and they absolutely loved it. For a day like today on a road like this it feels so completely at home. I must admit that I feel somewhat like a fish out of water driving it, but it is the sort of car that I'm sure you'd get used to. Unusually for a car which is really a 50s vehicle, it's actually quite large and it was designed as the family car. And rightly so, it was rather expensive. That's one reason it never really sold in the States. Although Citroen built a couple of million of these, I think, they only sold about 30-something thousand over in America. And the simple reason, no doubt, being that Americans already had soft, wobbly suspension of their own, and for the same price as this, you could go and buy something from Chevrolet with triple or even more power. And Americans do love their power. The one real element of this car which is very old fashioned is, like I said, that engine. It is, as far as I know, not really any more advanced than the unit that you got in the Traction Avant. 1.9 litres, which I believe they eventually did a 2.3 litre version of. They certainly did a, a 2.1, and honestly, not any of them are going to be that quick. There were apparently plans to make this car a six cylinder boxer lump from the off, but it simply wasn't going to happen for a number of reasons. And those included the punitive horsepower tax, which France still has a form of to this very day. Uh, the horsepower tax was a relatively common sense thing at the time. It was a way of trying to encourage car makers in post war France to build vehicles that people living in post war France could actually afford. If you want a fun drinking game, take a shot every time I say post-war France. Post-war France. Unfortunately, as things moved on and the rest of the world started to resume making more luxurious and aspirational vehicles, the French stuck with their system. And so if they wanted to be people in their home market to be able to afford the vehicles, they had to keep making them with these relatively small engines. If you've been enjoying this review, you might want to check out a few others that I did when I visited Normandy a couple of years ago. Those include some very nice Peugeots, Renaults and such like from a little bit later on, more 1970s cars. Honestly, driving this thing is an absolute delight. It is just one of those cars you can just bimble along and I want to pick the quietest, prettiest route that I possibly can and just enjoy just really really enjoy not driving but going out for a drive <laughs> I feel very bad because my good buddy Laurie I know is going to be intensely jealous of the fact that I managed to bag this for a review it is precisely his sort of thing and the DS had a very very long lifespan about two decades and it was such a brilliant car that had so many different uses they really did struggle to replace it i mean it's got plenty of room in here even through the lens of 2020 a very large boot and um unusual requirements aside like having the correct uh, synthetic liquid the lhs in this car the green stuff it's really a, a very easy thing because they made so many of them. Parts are relatively easy to get. And when this car was retrimmed, Citroen even had all of the correct codes for the paint, the carpets and everything. So they could easily restore it to the correct standard and specification, which is fabulous. In fact, so difficult was the task of replacing the DS, it never officially was. Two cars actually took over from it the SM and the CX. The SM was Citroen's attempt to move properly up market, whereas the CX was their attempt at making a more practical and affordable family car. In terms of pricing, well that is actually a very tricky one. 
I had a look and you'll get low priced examples starting around 15 to 20,000 pounds with decent restored usable examples something like this in more sort of 40 to 50,000 pound region and then and then particularly special ones going for considerably more up into six figures because it is such an aerodynamic thing the car will also cruise at 70 mile an hour quite happily it will be reasonably frugal for what it is and that means that should you want to enjoy your classic on longer journeys you certainly can Given the fact that it was such an advanced car for the time, there are some odd omissions. No safety belts whatsoever, although that's not so strange. It does have windy windows, which is something of a surprise. These seats are stupendously padded. I mean, they're hilarious. They, they look like there's no room in the car at all, but you sit on them and you sink so far down. Absolutely fantastic. Very easy to place when you get used to it. You've got a, a lot of bonnet out there. It, it is a big old slug, this thing. It really, really is. I, I feel like I'm driving Gru's car. Yeah, that's kind of what this feels like. And it's just brilliant. Plenty of ashtrays. And uh, as its owner said to me, he can easily see a, a pack of four mustachio gentlemen cruising across the auto routes or the back roads of France. Goulois on the go. Yeah. It's absolutely French. <laughs> yeah, I like this car. I like this car a lot. Thank you all for watching. Please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all for the next one. Bye-bye.